So I'm going to give this just the custom uh, couple, maybe like 20 seconds, just to get everyone else who's planning on calling in, and then I'll get this started. Okay, hello, welcome. I'm Susie Roy, the Customer Relations Manager for the Americas and the Research Engagement Lead here at SNOMED International. I'm very excited to welcome you all to the inaugural SNOMED CT Research Webinar. This SNOMED CT web series is a new venture for SNOMED International. We have a highly successful clinical webinar series, and this is the start of hopefully a just as successful new webinar series focused on the research on and with SNOMED CT terminology. Just a couple of housekeeping items before we begin. Please mute your audio and please turn off your camera. While I'd love to see you all, it looks like we actually have a good number of people on the call today, and I really don't want to diminish the quality of the stream. As for the audio, rest assured that we'll have a lot of time at the end for some Q&A, but until then, please mute your audio. This webinar is being recorded, and later this week, I'll send everyone who registered a link to the recording as well as information about our next research webinar which actually brings me to my next item. As mentioned, parallel to this research webinar stream, we have a clinical web series, which you may also be interested in. This is also a monthly webinar, but focused on the implementation and the use of SNOMED CT from a clinical perspective. Our next clinical webinar will be on June 3rd at 19 UTC. I also encourage you to go ahead and save the date for Wednesday, June 17th, which is our next research webinar. I'm actually still confirming the presenter and the time for that one, but more information will be announced soon, so just be on the lookout for that. And one last little bit of information before I hand it over to our presenter for the day. I wanted to do a plug for our annual SNOMED CT Expo. Right now, our October annual conference is planned, um, which is planned for Lisbon, Portugal, is still on schedule. But this year, we're actually planning a hybrid meeting, so we'll have both face-to-face -face and virtual sessions are being planned. Um, please be rest assured that we are working closely with our ministry colleagues in Portugal, and we're monitoring the current situation. But either way, we're actually very excited because we will have an expo no matter what. So because of that, I highly and highly encourage you and all of your colleagues to submit abstracts because you will have the opportunity to present at an international conference, whether that's in person or virtually. The deadline for abstract submissions is May 29th. Um, and if you have any questions at all, please contact me or really anyone at SNOMED International. Uh, otherwise, we really look forward to your abstract submissions and most of all your presentations in October. And I know you're probably already tired of me talking and you've all come here today so you could hear uh, our presenter, Dr. Olivier Bodenreiter. Um, while he needs absolutely no introduction, I do have the honor in telling you that Dr. Bodenreiter is a senior scientist and the chief of the Cognitive Sciences Branch and the acting director at the Lister Hill National Center for Biomedical Communications at the United States National Library of Medicine. His research focuses on terminology and ontology in the biomedical domain, both from a theoretical perspective and in their application to natural language processing, knowledge discovery, and information integration. Today, Dr. Bodenreiter helps us kick off this exciting new series with a presentation entitled SNOMED CT and Research, Why Should the SNOMED Community and Research Community Care? And with that, I'll send it over to you. Olivier, did you want me to drive this for you or did you want to go ahead and take the screen? Take the screen. Let me try and share my screen. Okay. And okay. If all this works well. Um, you will Perfect. see my screen in a minute and I, I see that you see them. So that's good. So, um, Hello, everybody. Thank you, Susie, for inviting me to this um, research seminar series. As you know, I've always been passionate about 
research and SNOMED with my uh, long involvement with SNOMED and I, I am uh, honored to um, give the kickoff in this um, research seminars. And um, so what I would like to do today is um, talk about SNOMED and research in uh, relatively general terms and try to make a point uh, why the SNOMED community should care about researchers and what the research community should care about SNOMED. My slides are not advancing, but yes. Okay, so there's a disclaimer I need to make because I work for the US government and uh, most often when I give a scientific presentation, the disclaimer doesn't matter because it's fairly clear that I talk as a scientist and, uh, and not as the, for the government as a whole. In this case, I'm gonna develop a, uh, I'm gonna give you my opinion about SNOMED and research. And it's important to distinguish it from uh, the opinion of the US uh, NRC, for example, or from, from uh, I'm not speaking as uh, a representative of the US to SNOBED International. I really am here as Olivier Bodenreiter today. So we're gonna talk about uh, the beginnings of SNOMED CT and see how research was present there. And before we do this, we're going to go uh, even earlier than this and see, um, see what happened before SNOMED CT, uh, very briefly. Uh, then I'm going to take uh, one particular workshop as an example, and I'm going to take the 2008 KRMED uh, workshop that was completely dedicated to SNOMED. And I'm going to talk about my involvement in, in research with SNOMED, and then uh, we'll give a few final thoughts. And as Susie mentioned, there should be uh, ample time for questions uh, in the end. So SNOMED has, SNOMED City has not always existed, and I'm going to spare you you know, the long history of, um, of SNOMED from SNAP in 1965 all the way to SNOMED CT. What I wanted to remind you of is that SNOMED CT uh, was actually born in a research lab. And a lot of the principles that already uh, guide the development of SNOMED CT uh, were put together in a uh, dissertation that titled Distributed Development of a Logic-Based Control Medical Terminology. And uh, as is often the case in dissertations, uh, every word here um, has, uh, has plays an important role in the title. And um, so the couple of things that are important here is to see the date. Date was, uh, the dissertation was defended in June 97. And uh, it is, of course, Keith Campbell's dissertation. And so this is a reminder for uh, some of you in the audience. I haven't looked at the participants list, but um, I imagine that for the younger members of the SNOMED community, they may not be aware of uh, all the history and uh, and the influences of, uh, th th that um, actually contributed to the development of SNOMED CT. So what's interesting is that uh, in, the, in the introduction to the dissertation, uh, Keith mentioned a, a couple of points that uh, he develops throughout the dissertation. Uh, one is that uh, uh, SNOMED CT is about, or what he proposes is, about the representation of clinical data. And it's not just about terms, it's also about providing logical definitions for the terms. And the description logics that was used at the time uh, was KRSS, which is a, 
a relatively, um, a relatively old description logic. And uh, of course, at this time, um, some of you need to realize that OWL didn't even exist. OWL hadn't been born yet. The second point that he develops is the notion of concurrency control, which means uh, in practice that uh, it's a distributed development. It's, it's part of the title. It's distributed editing of a terminology, which was a relatively new notion at the time. And so when we have distributed editing, how do we reconcile these definitions that might have been created by, uh, by different people? And that was also a problem with the older version of SNOMAD where, you know, multiple versions, uh, multiple uh, descriptions of a concept could be provided. And then um, a, uh, a system wouldn't necessarily know that all these definitions were equivalent. And that was one of the real advantages of bringing description logics into uh, the development of SNOMAD. And then there's also a part about, well, uh, how, do you, how do you maintain essentially SNOMAD or this terminology on the, in the long term? And how do you reconcile versions and, uh, and these aspects? So all this was in Keith, uh, Keith's dissertation. And I wanted to remind you of this because that was, that, that is foundational for SNOMED. Um, related to this, uh, uh, there, there was this notion at the time, uh, SNOMED marked the transition, if you wish, of terminology as no longer being solely a collection of terms and you do the best you can to define something through the words in the terms, but also uh, not only a collection of terms, but also logical definitions for these terms. And uh, that's the notion of defining concepts with, uh, with uh, DL-based definitions. And some of this was uh, put together in what's called a research paper. So it's really at that time, um, most of SNOMED and most of the principles behind SNOMED were really at the research stage, if you wish, and, and published as research, in this case, in Jamia. And of course, there's an interesting cast of uh, authors in this paper. Uh, Keith Campbell is the last author, but we also have Bob Dolin, uh, Stan Heff, Roberto Rocha, and, uh, and of course, our own Ken Spackman. All of them have played important roles in different uh, terminologies, and many of them have been associated um, uh, relatively closely, if not very closely, uh, with uh, SNOMED CP. Also, uh, since we're in the prehistory of SNOMED CP, also um, let us be reminded that. Uh, SNOMED was not the first effort to bring uh, description logics into clinical terminology. And uh, there was an important effort in the mid 90s. So SNOMED CP was, uh, was developed in the, the, the late 90s, if you wish, but in the mid 90s, early to mid 90s, there was this Galen effort uh, from Alan Rector's group in Manchester in the UK. Uh, there was a European project at the time, and they wanted to develop a, a language independent concept representation system, which uh, also leverages description logics. But again, we're before description logics even um, existed or at the very beginning of description logics. So Galen uh, started by defining the description logics that they, they were going to use for the definition of the concepts. Um, again, they insist on separating the concepts from the terms and uh, as part of Galen, they developed a terminology server that was a multilingual terminology server. That was a great project that was foundational. It didn't uh, survive as such, if you wish, as an artifact uh, for different reasons that I don't have to, time to, to get into. Uh, 
Um, but that was also a, a foundational project. So having reviewed the prehistory of uh, SNOMED CT, we can now look at the, the early days of SNOMED CT and, and research aspects of these. So um, I, <laughs> I just did what uh, everybody would do. So I took PubMed, and by the way, this is uh, a view of the new, uh, better PubMed that was just released uh, a few days ago. And it was in, in preview mode earlier, and now it's, it's the official uh, version of uh, PubMed. And they do this great things that I used to do manually in the past, which is uh, uh, you can get a count for the, num the number of uh, mentions of something um, by year. And so without doing very much, we can see here the distribution of the number of papers uh, that mention SNOMED in, in a way or the other uh, over time, uh, starting in 2001. And what we can see is that uh, it ramps up uh, relatively slowly between 2001 and 2006, 7, 8. And after that, there's roughly 50 papers a year that um, that uh, mentions SNOMED in one way or the other. So what we're going to do is uh, uh, look at the papers from the, the first period, 2001, from 2006. And I group them in a few categories. So if you look at the very early papers, it's essentially uh, all papers from the SNOMED team themselves, if you wish. It's, uh, it's uh, CAP at the time with uh, Ken Spackman being involved in all these papers uh, with a bunch of um, other people. But then we also see uh, David Markwell involved at the beginning, uh, Amy Wong, and, uh, and Bob Dolan again. So essentially, at the time, they were, they were telling the world, they were evangelizing about SNOMED, and they were telling the world uh, how it had been put together, um, what, um, uh, what, you know, what they were going to use about um, for procedures. And uh, you can note that uh, the, the Dolin paper about uh, the procedure model was about SNOMED RT, which was the, the direct predecessor of SNOMED CT. So it's really the early days in this case. Uh, so what's interesting also to me is that as soon as SNOMED CT was out, uh, a researcher grabbed it and tried to see if it was uh, useful to them and how good it was for their purpose. And again, we're not surprised, surprised to see a bunch of people who are still active in the community. Um, Jim Campbell, for example, looked at SNOMED in 2002 and um, from the perspective of, you know, is it useful for um, an emergency department? Can we code, you know, the primary reason for visit uh, in the ED? Sue Beckham and uh, a gang of nurses um, looked at it from the, from the perspective of nursing vocabularies. There was, at that time, a very strong emphasis on nursing vocabularies, and of course, and they were, there was a large number of nursing vocabularies. Of course, it was interesting to see if SNOMED CT could provide a solution for integrating these, these nursing vocabularies. Uh, Steve Brown and others looked at it from the perspective of the coverage uh, of the terms that are used in the Veterans Administration in the US. And, uh, and others, uh, Peter Elkin and, and, and Steve Brown again, uh, looked at it from the perspective of coding uh, the problem list, which are you know, really important use cases for SNOMED. So when, of course, this is a selection and this is an arbitrary selection and I'm, I take full responsibility for uh, citing some papers and not others. Um, I, I 
I'm not trying to give you a full list. The litany would be pretty boring. So um, I'm editorializing on some point that I found interesting in this paper. So as we go along, we still have uh, a string of papers that assess the value of SNOMAD, but they, are, they start to push the envelope, if you wish. So Rachel Richardson, who's been also uh, active in the SNOMAD CT community, uh, looks at it, but not just for clinical uh, terms, for clinical research terms. So can we use it for clinical research, for clinical trials and these kind of things? Um, uh, others start looking at it, but also pushing the envelope in the sense of uh, using post-coordination and not just the pre-coordinated terms. And in this case, it was for heart murmur findings, but the, the important thing here is that uh, they went beyond the pre-coordinated terms and used post-coordination. And then uh, it's getting used in um, HL7 CDAs, and it's getting used in coordination also with LINC. And it's interesting to see how uh, the multiple terminologies can be used at the same time. Of course, researchers also um, start looking at how good SNOMED is for, for something, not just what coverage it has, but what, it, uh, what is its quality. And uh, Werner Koristers and Barry Smith looked at it and used ontology-based methods uh, to, to try and find errors in SNOMED. Uh, others looked at the, the quality of SNOMED from the perspective of, well, can we, can we code reliably and reproducibly with SNOMED? Is it better than other terminologies in terms of its, the reproducibility of coding? And uh, Michael Chang did this uh, along with uh, Jim Cimino in, in, at Columbia at that time. Of course, uh, we find uh, familiar faces, you know, familiar names, Stefan Schultz, looked at, and Jeremy Rogers looked at SNOMED, and we're rethinking the need for wall groups, and we're actually advocating at the time uh, for a, a stronger description logic that, that would um, allow for, um, you know, not using the wall groups or uh, ignoring the wall groups if, uh, if we could. And finally, there's this guy, Bowden Ryder here, uh, who was in a phase where, uh, in my group, we were um, doing ontology alignment with focus and atomical ontologies. And of course, we, we, we found it interesting to compare uh, the representation of anatomy in the foundational model of anatomy that Cornelius Ross and his group had developed at the University of Washington and the anatomy in SNOMED CT that had some similarities with it that uh, was somewhat different as well. Of course, uh, as, as soon as something new is, um, is out, we need to integrate it with uh, what exists. And um, so Yves Lucier, who was involved with the editorial committee of SNOMED International, the, the earlier version of SNOMED, uh, also uh, looked at mapping terms in, in the context of uh, phenotypes. Uh, Kinwa Fong from NLM and others at the time looked at the integration of SNOMED into the Unified Medical Language System, the OMLS, and the OMLS format was actually changed at the time to account for uh, the specificity uh, of uh, SNOMED. And, and again, uh, there were methods developed for mapping uh, nursing vocabularies, as I mentioned already. It's a different group here, it's kind of the learning, but uh, it's, um, uh, it, it was an important activity at the time. And the last thing I, I'm going to mention from this era is that some people started to look at SNOMED beyond terminology, but started to look at SNOMED as a knowledge source, because you can uh, exploit the relations that you find in, um, in, in SNOMED for other things. For example, my group looked at uh, uh, the relations, the finding site relations, if you wish, 
uh, as a way of grouping ICD concepts, concepts from the International Classification of Diseases, uh, by, um, by anatomical locations and comparing them to the grouping of, um, of ICD uh, rubrics. But again, people start pushing the envelope. And it was a time in the, in the early uh, to mid 2000s where there was a lot of activity in, um, in semantic similarity, uh, as especially semantic similarity based on uh, the hierarchical structure of terminologies. And of course, people uh, use SNOM, the hierarchical structure of SNOMED to not only measure um, uh, semantic similarity among SNOMED concepts, but also measure sem semantic similarity uh, among patients based on the, the annotations that they had to SNOMED uh, concepts. And that was work by uh, Genevieve Melton and, uh, and George Hipscrap at um, Columbia. And uh, of course, because, uh, uh, because there's a lot of text in SNOMED, it is also NLP type people who grab SNOMED and, uh, and looked at it, uh, in this case, from the perspective of uh, translation. And that's Pierre Zweigenbaum's group in, uh, in Paris. So in summary for all this, uh, at the very beginning, uh, the few papers that they were about SNOMED were about, you know, how did we build it? And, and there was a lot of research. Uh, and it was a mix of research and evangelization, if you wish. And after that, we can find that there's essentially two, uh, uh, two aspects of um, SNOMED in the research community. On the one hand, there's the applied research, you know, trying to measure coverage, utility, mostly in clinical communities, but also for clinical research and, and, uh, and other use cases. And there's the more basic research. So it's not basic research as uh, in physics or in chemistry sometime, it's, uh, it's, it's borderline applied, but uh, it's research without a direct application, if you wish. Uh, and uh, in here, we can find the terminology research. So new methods for quality assurance, new methods for mapping, and also uses of SNOMED beyond its uh, terminological features. Uh, and I mentioned again, uh, using SNOMED as a, uh, as a source for computing uh, semantic similarity uh, to, to compute distance among patients, for example. And uh, what's interesting is that after that, after this early period, we can find a steady stream of publications uh, uh, with about 50 papers a year in, uh, in PubMed. So I'm going to um, go a little bit faster and talk uh, a little bit less about the papers, but I thought it was interesting to also look briefly at uh, a workshop organized in, um, in 2008 as part of the KRMED series. So KRMED, there had been a, a few editions before that that were not dedicated to SNOMED, in which SNOMED was represented, but, uh, but not dedicated to SNOMED. And, um, but the 2008 edition was completely about SNOMED. So what did we discuss in uh, Phoenix, Arizona in May of um, uh, 2008? So uh, what's interesting here is that the, the, the inviting, the invited keynote uh, talk was actually from Franz Bader in uh, Germany. And Bader is uh, an informatics guy. He's a computer science guy, a description logics person, doesn't care specifically about SNOMED or any other particular uh, ontology, if you wish. What he cares about is description logics. But we managed to interest him into SNOMED, and um, he actually made a case for using, um, using a relatively simple uh, EL-type description logics rather than you know, the full 
a might of uh, our DL at the time. So, of course, we find there's another invited talk uh, by Jim Campbell, uh, another usual suspect here. And, um, and he argued that, uh, that SNOMED was putting up, you know, beyond ICD, essentially. And, and again, I'm not going to go through all the talks, but uh, what I find interesting is that uh, uh, there were sessions like the first one about formalization and classification that are essentially, um, you know, looking at uh, very technical description logic aspects of SNOMED. Um, Michael Lawley was there at the time and Alan Rector, uh, which I've mentioned uh, already. Um, so a bunch of, a, a mix of talks um, that are at a really relatively low technical level. And uh, on the other hand, uh, talks about applications. Of course, uh, uh, talks about, uh, about mappings because it's always a theme that, uh, that is important in the community. And uh, um, I'm gonna go to the, uh, the next day. Um, and, and here there was even more about, uh, more about mapping. And, uh, you know, the, what we can find here is that the, the usual themes, if you wish, uh, you know, post-coordination, how, how can we push post-coordination, post the representation. And, um, but, so what was striking here is that it's the balance, if you wish, between things that were on the more basic side, you know, the, the representation, the formalization, and things that were more applied, and that's three characteristics of the, of the research interests about SNOMED in the community. Um, so I think I, I made pretty much uh, the points that I wanted to make. Um, so they are no longer, uh, the, the, the KMED has been discontinued and has been essentially absorbed into the International, uh, International Conference on Biomedical Ontologies that in recent years have been dominated by the biological ontologies from the elbow family. But uh, it's interesting to see that uh, in 2019, last year, uh, when ICDO returned to Buffalo, uh, Snob International was uh, present as a sponsor and there was a round table that was organized uh, with uh, Jim Case as a panelist on, on the role of uh, Snowmed CT um, in the ecosystem of, um, of uh, medical ontologies. So I'm gonna go briefly through my own journey uh, my research journey with SNOMED, and it's going to be, again, the opportunity to highlight a few of, um, a few of the, the, my contributions uh, over time. Uh, well, that's essentially the same, um, the same distribution that we saw at uh, the beginning, but uh, they're restricted to my papers. So in the previous, I forgot to mention this, but in the previous, uh, 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 in the previous distribution, uh, there were 720 papers about SNOMED uh, between 2001 and 2020. And it looks like I contributed uh, 27 of these. So I've done a few papers that are essentially um, evangelization papers, review papers, but to, to look at the, at uh, features of SNOMED, most often as part of uh, an ecosystem with, uh, with other uh, terminologies, ontologies, uh, and classifications. Um, the first one, biomedical ontologies in action, was essentially a functional analysis of these terminologies and ontologies and I picked uh, Jim Semino a few years ago, a few years before that, had published uh, a paper about a review of uh, 10 or 12 high impact biomedical terminologies and ontologies 
And I took those and I looked at them from a functional perspective. So that was my contribution then. And, um, and more recently with uh, uh, Ronald Cornett and then Riemann, uh, we wrote uh, we wrote something in which we compared uh, SNOMED, LOINC, and RX Norm, and uh, we analyzed them individually and how can they they can work together. And it was a good opportunity to work with uh, two great people here. I've done a bunch of work on uh, quality assurance. So quality assurance is more on the basic side, if you wish. It's methods for uh, not only finding errors, but trying to understand why there are inconsistencies at some point. Uh, so we looked uh, very early on uh, with my uh, colleague Anita Berga and, um, and Barry Smith. We looked at, you know, trying to explain uh, how the, the hierarchies of SNOMED were created. And remember that at that time they were um, many fewer defined concepts than they are now. So sometimes you really needed to read between the line and, 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 and try and see why uh, one concept was the, the child of another one. And more recently, I did work with uh, GQ Jang and his team on uh, using lettuces uh, and uh, after that, hybrid methods using lattices and lexical features uh, to find holes, if you wish, in the SNOMED hierarchies. Not extremely practical, but, uh, but a good opportunity to develop methods and, and do QA of uh, SNOMED. We'll come back to that later. Uh, I was privileged to you know, be able to look at some of the issues uh, in SNOMED before it, they became mainstream. So I talked already about uh, comparison of anatomy between the FMA and SNOMED. Uh, early on, I looked at uh, representation of lab tests in lying versus SNOMED. And it was you know, prior to the memorandum of understanding between Reagan Streif and uh, SNOMED International. Uh, also looked at uh, uh, MEDRA and SNOMED and how they can uh, work together. And again, that was before there was even an agreement between uh, MSSO and uh, SNOMED International. Um, and similarly, we've looked at uh, rare diseases and it was before Orphanet was integrated in SNOMED. So I'm not claiming that I invented all this or that I even, uh, that I even, uh, was at the origin of integrating Orphanet or these other terminologies into SNOMED. I just was uh, at the right place at the right time, if you wish, when I could, could look at, at uh, these issues before they became uh, mainstream. And one of the last thing that we did uh, was to look at uh, phenotypes in the human phenotype ontology and, uh, and compare that to the phenotypes in SNOMED, and I know that HPO is of great interest now from the uh, from the genomic uh, initiative. So I was privileged to, you know, uh, work with great collaborators uh, uh, to be allowed to develop cool methods to apply them at scale. Because for everything we've done, we've looked at SNOMED as a whole and not just some tiny sub hierarchy of SNOMED, and. Uh, and again, to do this before these things became uh, mainstream. Uh, I don't think I've had, when I look at all this, I don't think I've, I saw I had a lot of fun doing it. I don't think I had a great impact on SNOMED at all. And I think one of the reasons is because what I was doing was not necessarily integrated um, in the SNOMED development process. Uh, and that's the uh, typical of what we did for quality assurance. And we can come back to that um, uh, in my closing remarks. So why, why should we care? Why should SNOMED uh, care about research and why should the researchers care about SNOMED? So what we have is essentially two different communities. Uh, the two communities are strong and active, but they are separate. And each community has uh, their own goals and cultures. So 
uh, the snowman community of practice is typically a pragmatic, um, results-driven. Uh, they, they need to run their ship uh, very tightly, so they need to produce snowman uh, on time, and they don't have the luxury of focusing on you know, a tiny part of snowman. Uh, it needs to work across the board. Uh, they work on the long term, and uh, typically the kind of conferences that uh, Snowman International organizes is the Snowman City Expo. Uh, Susie reminded us about this year's edition. And uh, so the Snowman Expo is more a forum where uh, everybody can present interesting things about Snowman. Uh, it's more this than it is a scientific conference which is the traditional means of communication from the research community. And so the research community is also more uh, interested in the methods than sometime in the results. They don't mind working, on, working with toy examples on a limited scale, as long as it's sufficient for them to test the results. And most often they work uh, for as long as they get uh, money. Uh, which means uh, for, for the researchers that uh, work with uh, grant funding for as long as the grant is going to last. So it's, it's different perspectives. And um, I'm not saying that they, are, they cannot be reconciled. I'm just saying that it's, it's different goals and different cultures. So now, if we look at how the research community perceives SNOMED, and that's my interpretation of it, that's my opinion. I'm not claiming that I uh, necessarily uh, cover it all, but I think it's the, the, the researchers look at SNOMED as a rich source of information. It's, uh, it's big data, if you wish, and um, there's a lot of things that can be done with it. There are interesting problems that can be used for driving research. On the other hand, uh, SNOMED is behind a license, and I, I'm not going to you know, say too much about it, but uh, it makes it difficult uh, for researchers to distribute their materials freely, in particular when uh, at the time when you need to do uh, reproducibility, in, especially in the computer science era, where now it's, it's a must to essentially distribute your data and your methods uh, along with the papers such that others can really test if it works. So that the SNOMED uh, CD and others uh, make this difficult because, uh, because of the license uh, requirements. Uh, it was, I think, uh, it was perceived that there was, uh, that SNOMED didn't really care about, um, about research. Uh, and that SNOMED didn't have a process for engaging the research community. And of course, this is until recently because, uh, uh, because things are changing and have even changed in the past couple of years. But uh, I think there's a better process now. And, uh, if anything, this lecture series um, is, uh, is the embodiment of um, engagement with the research community. And, uh, and there was also the perception that SNOMED was more interested in working with other communities of practice or standard development organizations than working with the research community. Again, these are my opinions, and I, I take full responsibility for uh, expressing them. So now, how SNOMED perceives research. Um, so I think SNOMED, SNOMED International and HTSD before that uh, always perceived the researchers as, as a good source for innovation and experimentation. But not all the researchers are involved clinically. For example, these uh, computer science researchers are uh, disconnected from practice. And so they, they cannot always work autonomously with, uh, with SNOMED. Um, as I mentioned, they are not always engaged in long term because of the grant system. Um, 
I think that Snow had perceived research as being some kind of a distraction at some point and not being essential to business because it's not going to bring, you know, additional members. It's not, uh, it's, it might detract from, you know, doing things on time and things like this. And there was what I would qualify uh, mild hostility and it's probably too strong a word, but uh, we've seen some research papers being openly critical of Snowmet CT. And I think it was, it was the, the authors were well intended, but when Alan Rector published, you know, getting the foot out of the pelvis, the title uh, is striking beyond, uh, I mean, beyond what's in the paper, but uh, uh, Alan, uh, outline a number of issues with the representation of anatomy that have been addressed since. So that's, I think that that's all positive. But in, but he did it in a very public way uh, through research publications, which I think uh, is what independent researchers should, uh, should do. But there's always been this tension, if you wish, with the research community when they are critical of snowmen. So how can we move forward? And again, this is my perspective on things. I think this research uh, seminar series is great. And I definitely want to thank Susie for putting it together and for inviting me. Um, we, uh, um, I think SNOMED could be more engaged in convening workshops or in sponsoring research workshops. The research license is, is always going to be an issue, and I'm not going to say more about this. Uh, we, we know it, it is. Um, I think SNOMED could give more for organizing research efforts, essentially when the, these research efforts are really close to uh, use cases that SNOMED is interested in, for example, clinical analytics. and you know, working with researchers who have large da clinical data warehouses to test where SNOMED works, where it doesn't work, uh, is something that uh, should be done uh, uh, much more. And, um, and the last thing I, I'm going to mention is that one thing researchers often struggle with is the evaluation. So you develop a method, you test the method, it, it works on paper, and then, um, or if you find things with your method, if you find like missing hierarchical relations, uh, how do you know they are good? You need to have essentially assessment from SNOMED CT experts and, and most groups don't necessarily have uh, SNOMED CT experts uh, that can work for them. So I think one thing that uh, SNOMED could provide is some kind of an in-kind contribution to research efforts by providing access to SNOMED experts that could, you know, contribute to investigations and, uh, and, and help researchers uh, develop methods that can ultimately serve the purpose of SNOMED. So I will stop there in uh, thanking you and um, I will be happy to take any questions. Thank you, Olivier. That was absolutely awesome to do a really deep uh, dive into the rich history of STEM and CT research. Thank you. Um, so I know I scolded everyone earlier, but you are allowed to unmute yourselves now if anyone has a question for Dr. Bodenreiter. So I do have one, uh, Olivier. So um, as you alluded to, um, there's a very uh, long history of uh, SNOMED CT research. And um, we're really starting to kick off our engagement with the research community at SNOMED International. And you mentioned um, a couple of potential ways in which uh, SNOMED International could uh, provide a little bit more engagement with the research community. And um, I just wanted to know a little bit more about your thoughts. One of the ideas that I had in addition to this whole um, research webinar series is also to have some sort of forum. Um, and I was just wondering if this is something that you think that would um, engage researchers and bring researchers together. Um, and 
this form then could stem into various workshops, as you had alluded to, and other, um, other sorts of things could come from that. What are your thoughts along that? So I think that's a great idea. And, um, and there, there's many ways in which such a forum could be helpful. I mean, it could help bring younger researchers uh, up to speed more rapidly because sometimes the questions that you have have been, uh, have been uh, asked earlier by you know, the previous generations. And, uh, and as we know, people don't read <laughs> too much of the papers that have, been, uh, that have been written before and prefer to reinvent the wheel sometimes. So I've done some of it, I guess. Um, We're so, all guilty of that. <laughs> um, where, uh, where you could ask questions and, and uh, be brought up to speed by somebody who can mentor you or give you a quick pointer to something uh, that uh, that will help you, I think, is great. Um, it's also good for people to uh, find collaborators uh, or to share the the tooling or the the prototypes that they have developed and uh, and find people to help them test uh, these prototypes or or critique them and um, and develop them further. So I think all these things. Uh, could be facilitated by creating the sense of a research community around SNOMED uh, through, uh, through a, a forum or a platform where people could exchange information. So that's great. Awesome. Thank you. Um, anyone else have any questions? Um, I uh, and so this is Mukesh from BC. Hi, yes. Hi, how are you? So uh, there is a question for Dr. Oliver. So as uh, I think it's a really good idea starting this webinar in the research area for the SNOMED. So Dr. Oliver, do you see anything uh, including the informatics professional or one who is already working in SNOMED CP in the industry to get involved them in your work so they can understand more or they can suggest what is really required to make it more uh, user-friendly or to make it more uh, doable with the clinicians can work well with them or just you focus on you think only the research community should be uh, limited for the one who is in that area just a um so i think thank you for, for your question so i i think uh, um the benefit of having a, a community, of developing a community and, and doing this engagement with the community is also to provide some uh, mentorship and bring people to the same table. And of course, when we come to such a community, we're going to have, uh, you know, people who've been breeding SNOMED uh, for 20 years and, and sometimes more. And others that uh, you know just discovered it um, you know six months ago in the context of uh, their dissertation or, or uh, at uh, you know in uh, in academic work. So I think uh, it's it's a good idea. We we want to be as inclusive as possible, and researchers you know there's a tradition of mentoring in research. Mentoring is a, is a uh, an important part of research. And I'm pretty sure that uh, we could have such a mentoring effort uh, um, throughout this uh, SNOMED research community and that, uh, that it would be a good way of, um, of engaging the community and uh, um, creating you know, partnerships and, uh, and collaborations. So thank you. So basically the challenge we see at this point in the industry, there are uh, like the SNOMED CP did really good job making it more available and as you raised a few times the licensing. I think uh, if someone is doing the research or something just published, if it is not being used in the industry, that is we see is, is challenge means things are developed but no one is using it. So in that area, I, I, I believe the SNOMED is doing a really great job. So by implementing, bringing the users together, so that is why I was just coming, I was wondering if 
we both come together as a community or as a forum, as uh, Susie mentioned too, that looking forward. So that will be more useful from the industry's perspective and research perspective to grow. Thank you for your answer. That's great to know. Thank you. Yeah. Any other questions? Any other questions? Right, Shamil here, I have a question. So yes. there are international versions of SNOMED CT and uh, the, the first question, is there a Canadian a version of, for Canada, including extensions required for Canada? And also maybe, uh, I don't know if uh, this is a good uh, chat to ask, but is there a, a Canadian uh, shrink version for Canada? So, so that instead of using 3000 concepts, uh, to have, uh, let's say, few thousands that are actually used uh, throughout Canada so that we can all uh, kind of standardize and harmonize uh, different projects with the same uh, code set. Yes, um, actually Canada is um, a very active member with the SNOMED International Community and um, Canada InfoWay is our national release center for um, all of our Canadian uh, affiliates. And you can actually access the Canadian edition, which includes the um, international release and Canadian uh, specific content um, from them. And um, I'm going to display my contact information right after this, and I can definitely get you the link, direct link to the InfoWay um, colleagues. And that way you can get access to the full Canadian edition. And also um, they have a number of subsets that are uh, frequently used in Canada and in other areas. So I will get that to you, no problem. Oh, that's great. So uh, CHI Terminology Gateway is the uh, is the uh, tool to retrieve those SNOMED concepts? Uh, I believe so. Yes. Yeah. Hi, hi, Susie. Linda is there. Hi, so. Linda. Yes. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> I will see you. <laughs> no, I wasn't sure the exact tool name. <laughs> yes, exactly. So yes, um, uh, the tool uh, called uh, Terminology Gateway is uh, the tool where you can have the Canadian edition uh, files as well as international SOMED CD, plus all of the um, uh, Canada Health InfoWay owned subset uh, that um, we, we are using to support um, a sharing of information in Canada, as well as um, other projects. So we have prescribed it project where we have the, fi the files for uh, supporting the ter that terminology and uh, PCLOD as well in Canada that we, we have. And uh, lastly, we have uh, a space onto the terminology gateway for uh, jurisdictional artifacts that are being shared amongst uh, the community. So um, yeah. We have all of that through the terminology gateway. And Info Central is our platform for uh, communities to share information and to access more toolings and additional related uh, standards uh, artifacts. Great, thank you, Linda, for jumping in and saving <laughs> me there. And um, yeah, if you could just email me and I can actually hook you and Linda up together um, via email after this and that is great. Okay, okay great, thank you. Yeah, You're welcome. Um, all right, um, I do want to be cognizant of everyone's time. Um, so my contact information is here and Olivier's um, email was up previously. So if anyone has any further questions for either me or um, Dr. Bodenreiter, please feel free to email either one of us. And um, I want to thank Dr. Olivier Bodenreiter for um, presenting today. This was absolutely awesome to hear and thank all of you for joining today. And I will see you all next month. Thank you. Thank you for organizing, Susie. Thank you.